This is the second aim of the treatment. Prevent air and fluid from returning to the pleural space. Chest tube is attached to a drainage device. It allows air and fluid to leave the chest. Contains a one-way valve to prevent air and fluid returning to the chest. Keeping the device is below the level of the chest tube for gravity drainage. Here, this is the most basic concept. How it works. A straw attached to the chest. Uh, a straw attached to the chest tube from patient is placed under 2 cm of fluid water seal. Here. This is a water seal. It's just like a straw in a drink. The air can push through the straw, but air can be drawn back. So see the diagram here. One tube is coming from the patient. Okay, this is a one-way valve. And it is going down up to the water seal. This is 2 cm of water. Okay, the tube is deep in the water. So you can see here the bubbles are going up and it is going out to the atmosphere through this tube. This is open to the air. So the air can be moving through the tube here and it's going out through here and here. This is a uh, tube open to the atmosphere. And the air cannot go back to the patient. See, if the air is coming through here, and it will not go under the water seal. The air cannot go under the water seal. So the patient is safe and the air cannot go back to the patient. Okay. This system works if only air is leaving the chest. If fluid is drawing, draining, it will add to the fluid in the water seal and it increases the depth. As the depth, in, depth increases, it becomes harder for the air to push through. A higher level of water and could result in air staying in the chest. So what we will do? Here you go. For a drainage, a second bottle was added. The first bottle collects the drainage and the second bottle is the water seal. With an extra bottle for the drainage, the water seal uh, will then remain at the same 2 cm. Here the diagram. The tube is coming from the patient. And it is going, uh, this is a one way valve going to the first bottle. So the drain can uh, be collected here. And the air will move again through this tube to the second water seal chain. So this is a water seal. And it is going and deep into the water. And the air is going, you can see the bubbles here. It's going like uh, the previous picture. It's going out of the water to the atmosphere. Okay. Here is the third aim of the treatment. Restore negative pressure in the pleural space. Many years ago, it was believed that suction was always required to pull air and fluid out of the pleural space and pull the lungs up against the pleural, parietal pleura. However, recent research has shown that suction may actually prolong air leaks from the lung by pulling air through the opening that would otherwise close its and so on. Okay, if suction is required, a third bottle is added. You will see here, this is the picture. A third bottle here is added. So the first one, the tube from the patient. Okay, the tube from the patient, it is going to the first bottle and we can collect the drain here, the fluid drainage. Okay and again the second the tube is moving through from this bottle to the second bottle to collect the air as we see uh, before this is the second bottle okay we can see here water seal chamber okay the tube is going inside the bottle and dipped inside the water so the air can go out so the air cannot go back so this is a water seal so you can see the bubbling here. It is moving up and again moving through this tube and to the, to the third bottle. Okay. And it is going out of the pressure, out of the, uh, to the atmosphere. And the third bottle, the negative pressure. Okay. This is the bottle regulating the negative pressure. 
if we connect to the vacuum I mean the tube to the vacuum source okay and this negative pressure will come through this tube and it, it will be uh, here and the, this is the tube opens the atmosphere winds air it will regulate the vacuum even if we are uh, opening the vacuum at the maximum level this water and this tube will regulate the uh, I mean will keep uh, a medium vacuum it will not give uh, as much as we are giving here it will not give to the patient because it is very dangerous it will suck all the tissue from the lungs so it, it is for the safety also okay so if there is vacuum we started it will this tube will suck the air from outside so we can see the bubbling here so we'll see the suction is working and the amount of bubbles here it will uh, give idea about how much suction we are applying so the bubble we will see here after uh, making on the suction and this negative pressure will be for divide I mean will go to the patient the negative pressure this suction will be resulting in the suck the drain and air out from the lungs okay so the straw submerged in the suction control body typically to the 20 centimeter h2 limits the amount of negative pressure that can be applied to the pleural space in this case it is 20 centimeter what we are keeping the submerged straw is open at the top as the vacuum source is increased once the bubbling begins in the body it means the atmospheric pressure is being drawn into the limit uh, into the border to limit the suction level so just see here as uh, we are opening the suction here the atmospheric pressure will be drawn through this tube to this water so as we can see here it is bubbling according to the suction level we can see the bubbling here So, the depth of the water in the suction board determines the amount of negative pressure that can be transmitted to the chest, not the reading of the vacuum regulator. As I explained to you here, if, even if you are uh, opening the vacuum uh, at the maximum level, it will not give to the patient. This amount of the water will be the one to regulate the suction, how much we are giving to the patient. Now we will see how a chest drainage system works. Expiratory positive pressure from the patient helps push air and fluid out of the chest, cuff and valsalva. This valsalva means just try forcibly exhale while your mouth and nose close. So it will make some pressure inside the thoracic cavity. This pressure will help to push the air and fluid out. And while coughing also, there will be a uh, high pressure inside the lungs this pressure this pressure will help to push the air and fluid out and the second the gravity helps fluid drainage as long as the chest drainage system is below the uh, level of the chest and the third one is suction can improve the speed at which air and fluid are pulled out from here we will see the development of chest drain bottle from bottle to a box this picture uh, as we explained before this is a collection chamber and water seal and this is a suction regulator so we'll uh, consider this bottle in a box so the same way this tube is from the patient and this will be the collection collection chamber one two three and here it is the water seal chamber up to two centimeter water is filled up here and this is up to 20 centimeter water filled up here and uh, it is for the suction regulator one is suction one is a collection chamber and the other one here it is a water seal chamber and this is suction control chamber uh, from box to the bedside this is an example of uh, widely using uh, chest drainage bottle nowadays and as we can see here this is uh, the tube from the patient okay and it is collection chamber and the maximum capacity of the collection chamber is 1200 ml and as we can see here this is the 
uh, water seal chamber the water should be filled up to 2 cm and uh, this is the suction regulator the water is filled up to 20 cm and uh, uh, this area we can see one oscillation movement while the patient is breathing see this is a, a, a ball if according to the breathing the ball will move up and down you can see the oscillation thus we will uh, see the tube is functioning or it is in the place and work, working well so according to this oscillation movement we will make sure so if there is any air leak we can see bubbling over here okay for checking the air leak we should close the suction it should not be bubbling so if both are bubbling we will be confused so close the suction first then see uh, ask the patient to cough or deep breathe so while deep breathing or coughing if there is any air leak we will see the bubbling here okay and this bubbling and this oscillation movements are quite normal let's see what is the nurse's role in chest tube uh, management assess the respiratory status at least four hour every four hour frequent respiratory assessment is necessary to monitor the effect of the chest tube and the second one Maintain a closed system. It's very important. Tape all connections and secure chest tube to the chest wall to prevent any leak. If there is leak, the chest tube function um, will be decompromised and we will not get the uh, result. Keep the chest tube bottle below the chest level always. Avoid king or leak in the tube. Just uh, check the water level in water seal and suction control chamber frequently. Check the drainage and document. It is very important to assess the condition of the patient and especially like uh, post op patients. Assist and encourage for ambulation as allowed. Then the respiratory exercise like coughing, breathing, deep breathing, and spirometry. In case of tube dislodging, you should immediately apply a sterile occlusive petroleum jelly dressing. It will prevent the air sucking to the chest cavity and will help the patient to breathe normal. See about the patient teaching. It is also very important to get the full support from the patient. First one, instruct the patient to notify healthcare professional if there is any breathing complication, any breathing problems. And the second, notify if any leak or oozing from the insertion site noted. And third, Encourage for exercises like mobilization, coughing, deep breathing, and spirometry. Keep the chest drainage border always below the chest level for gravity drainage while moving. And make sure this tubing to the chest border is not uh, on the floor. It may, uh, it, may make, it may lead to the stepping over on the tube and to be uh, causing the dislodgement of the tube. So make sure it, to keep the tubings away from the ground and away from the footsteps. And keep the insertion side clean and dry. And do not manipulate the chest tube. It is very important. Don't play with the chest tube. It will be very dangerous for the patient. It may cause dislodgement or leak or uh, accidental removal. So... Do not play with the chest tube. Thank you.